I just finished watching the Ewoks cartoon series, and well, today we talk about the show and all of the toys. Welcome back to the channel. I had never watched the Ewoks cartoon series that was made from 1985 to 1986. But the first time I was introduced to anything outside of Star Wars movies was an Ewok adventure in where two kids who had crash landed with their parents on Endor and separated from them had to go on a huge adventure to find their parents with the help of Wicket and some of the Ewoks. That's where I learned Wicket's name and that there were more adventures to be told in the Star Wars universe. But the cartoon called the Ewoks was something that I never knew existed. And for those of you that are new, I am collecting the entire Star Wars Kenner line made from 1977 to 1985 and I started from scratch. So if you wanna go back and catch up on those episodes, please do. So let's get into the history of the Ewoks cartoon series. In 1983, the Return of the Jedi movie was a success with the public. And although hardcore Star Wars fans at the time rated this last installment as the weakest of the three movies, most of the criticism landed on the moon of Endor and the introduction of the Ewoks. Some critics called them a childish introduction of a set of characters who seemed out of place in the Star Wars story and was pandering to children. And that was exactly the group of fans who loved them. And as a child, when I saw the Ewoks, I absolutely loved them. And my favorite was the small Ewok that found Leia lost in the forest. At the time, I never knew this character was called Wicket, but the popularity with these characters with children brought on a ton of merchandise aimed at kids, from Halloween costumes to clothes, night lights, and yes, action figures. Kids wanted more Ewoks. So in 1985, the Nelvana Production Company with Lucasfilm Limited released two seasons of the Ewoks with season one premiering on ABC on September 7th, 1985. The first season really sets up the Ewoks as a tribe that lives in the forest of Endor and are much one with their environment. Their main adversaries are the Dulocs, led by King Gornish and Queen Urga, with the king's right-hand man, Umwok, a Duloc shaman, and the evil Morag, the Tulag Witch. Now, in the series, there are other adversaries that are introduced, but the Dulocs appear more often than not, and it sort of makes them the Gargamel to the Ewok Smurfs, if you want to use that analogy, as the Dulocs are always trying to take over the Ewok village throughout the series. The main Ewoks that are introduced are Young Wicket, whose dream is to be an Ewok warrior one day, and that's his main goal in life. Young Nisa, the daughter of Chief Chirpa and the future queen ruler of the tribe. Young Tebow, who dreams of two things, being an Ewok shaman and being the love of Latara. A female Ewok who enjoys the finer things in life and is sort of the Smurfette of the series. Elder Chief Chirpa, leader of the Ewok tribe and leader of the warriors. Elder Logre, the wise magic wielding shaman of the Ewoks who eventually takes Tebow under his wing as an apprentice and Logre is the keeper of the Sun Star, which we'll get into later. Young Paplu, the biggest and strongest of the young Ewoks. And Milani, an Ewok youngling and she has a huge crush on Wicket and longs for his attention. There are other Ewoks that get featured in episodes, but these are the main ones that get the most story and screen time. We are the, e e e e e the opening music is a bit jarring at first, but putting myself back in time as a six-year-old, I can see that hearing this coming from the TV, you knew that it was Ewoks time, and by the third episode, you're singing that theme song and getting ready for another adventure. And to tell you the truth, it took me about three episodes to get into it, but when I did, I did. And although it's only something that I watched, to do this episode? If I was to discover these as a kid, I would have loved them. The animation style and detail gets better as the episodes goes on, and the stories and lessons that they teach to kids are pretty entertaining and have some good messages also. Almost like little Ewok parables on how to live a good life. Although Wicket could be said to be the star and is often the most prominent character, he's not always the one to get the center story as there is character development for all the Ewoks and you get to know all their personalities and traits throughout the series. You even get to know the Dulocs and their character traits as well. All of the characters are cute, lovable, even the villains become lovable, and the stories, although having predictable plots, are really fun to watch. 
As the season goes on, we discover that the Sun Star is the main source of power for the Ewoks, and it's this stone that brings balance to the forest. It seems that every adversary who knows about this power tries to take it from Logre and the Ewoks to take over the forest. And there is a huge backstory with Logre and the evil rich Tulog and sets up the story of the Sun Star. And George Lucas loved this cartoon series so much and was a fan of it that he gave the Nirvana Production Company the rights to produce a second season. The new second season brought us a new theme song, updated animations, and new voice actors. And to tell you the truth, the only change from season one to two that I wished had stayed the same was the voice actor for Logre, but that is a super nitpick. The characters stay the same for the most part, and we get introduced to more adversaries, as well as two mini stories per episode, which is nice, but sometimes the stories feel rushed, and we have to get to the point quicker, but it's great that we got to see and hear more stories, although season one took more time with character development from episode to episode, and in season two, we get to see the characters in more action situations. I love that the writers and creators often made the Ewoks solve problems and never made violence or battle a first option, and took into consideration their surrounding neighbors who shared the forest and the consequences of what war could be. We also get to know Wicket's full name to be Wicket Wistry Warwick, who gets his name from the actor who actually played Wicket in the Return of the Jedi movie, Warwick Davis. In season two, it also introduces Dr. Rhaegar, who works for the Empire, and you can see the story start to cross into the events leading up to the Battle of Endor in Return of the Jedi. Dr. Rhaegar wants to use the Sun Star as a weapon for the Empire. But all in all, the series was made for children, and the show does a great job to stay fun, have simple stories and lessons, and keep the animation fresh and entertaining. And as an Easter egg, Paul Dini, who wrote the best cartoon series in history, in my opinion, the Batman animated series, got his start as a writer for the Ewoks cartoon series. And now we get into the toy line that was made from this series. And we only got six figures made from the Ewoks cartoon line. And if you get a chance to see the two seasons, you wish they would have made more. So here's the ones that we got. Of course we got Wicked. And since Kenner made these, who also made the Care Bears, you can see the resemblances to the Care Bears design and how they tried to use that sculpt as a starting point for this Wicket figure. And then there was Logre. And to be honest, I loved the design to this figure and the appeal that they were making to kids who were fans of the cartoon series. And had I known this cartoon series existed in the first place and I saw these on the toy shelves, I probably would have asked for some of these for my birthday or Christmas. But for the main characters in the Ewoks cartoon series, that's the only two that they made. We didn't get any of the other Ewok characters, but we did get a lot of Dulocs. The Dulok Scout, Dulok Shaman, King Gornish, and Urga. But prototypes of Chief Chirpa, Paplu, Weechi, Morag, Bondo, leader of the Jindas, existed some of which are considered holy grails to collectors. And the one villain I wish they would have made was Dr. Rhaegar, just to have that be a He-Man looking character in a Star Wars universe. But that's all we got, and I would love to one day go down this line of characters and collect all six. But before we go into collecting a character and do a deep dive on that figure, down in my descriptions are links for supplies that you may need for your collecting journey. And when you click and buy using my links, it does support the channel, so thank you for that. And also, join me on all my other social media. The links for those are on the homepage of my YouTube channel. But for now, I want to get a figure that I have always wanted as a kid. When I was putting my list together on this run and I added this figure, it was one that I knew I was going to be excited about. Wicket W. Warwick made his first appearance in The Return of the Jedi and was played by the already mentioned Warwick Davis, who was 11 years old when he got the part to play in Ewok Extra. But when Kenny Baker, who was famous for playing R2-D2, became ill and couldn't play the role of Wicket, 
George Lucas picked Warwick to play the part after seeing Warwick perform roles as an extra. And the rest is history. And the figure of Wicket is one of the smallest figures in the line. He was released in the second wave of the Return of the Jedi figures on the 77 A cards in 1984. He comes with his hood and spear. And things to look out for when collecting this figure is to make sure the spear and hood are authentic. Looking on the Imperial Gunnery, Wicket Hoods will have the following details on the inside of the mold. A letter E, letter G, letter H, or an EPM mark that looks like this in this area. And for the spear, Wicket uses the same spear that came with Ramba. They should have a certain amount of flex to them, but are not rubbery feeling like some of the reproduction spears, and they aren't stiff and brittle as well. There are two types of variants with the spear that have these mold features. And looking on the Star Wars tracker, on the low end, I saw prices for a complete example of Wicket falling at $50 all the way to $65 on the average high end. So I found a great example of Wicket on eBay for $65 and it is a great example, which is right on the high end of the spectrum for this figure. But as you can see from what we got, this figure looks great. The limbs are super tight and they feel uncracked. I took a look at the accessories and compared them to the photo examples on the Imperial Gunnery. And the spear seems legit and feels legit. And the hood, it has a letter F, which concerned me as I did not see this on the Imperial Gunnery. I went to the Imperial Commissary on Facebook and I got this answer, that you can find the letter E through H on the hood. So seeing a letter F on the stamp, it's legit. So that made me feel more assured. And if you are ever unsure of a feature of a figure, going on a trusted collecting group is a great way to have other collectors add clarity to a question that you may have. That's what the groups are there for. So if you need another resource besides reference sites, Facebook and collecting groups are a great option. So just ask the community. So let's cross off this wicket from our list and I'm super excited to add this little Ewok to the collection that we got from an eBay seller for a total price of $65.24. So if you haven't seen the Ewoks cartoon, you can watch both seasons of the Ewoks right now on Disney+. Plus. So if you have that, head on over there and catch up on your childhood. Personally, I thought that they were awesome. And as a Star Wars fan, I really enjoyed them and what the artists and the writers did to bring that story to life. And although I wish Kenner did a larger line of the toys, I think I'm definitely gonna complete that set and eventually go into collecting the Ewoks line just because I really enjoyed that cartoon series. So thanks for joining me and going over that brief history of what the Ewoks cartoon series was and the vintage figures that came from them. And if you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. It does support the channel. And we finally have our own merch store. So head on down to the descriptions to get your hands on some Padawan collector gear. And yes, there's even some Rami and Jaws gear. And please subscribe if you wanna see more Star Wars collecting content from me. And also hit that notification bell so you know when videos go live. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And as always, my friends, thank you and I will see you next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.